place called Perfect, Chapter 32, The Giveaway. I can't believe I didn't know about this place. To think that my son was in here and I was living just a few metres away. Billy gestured back across the rooftops to Perfect. It's okay, Dad, Billy Jr. soothed. Loads of parents forgot about their kids. There are lots of orphans in no man's land. The group slipped in through the bathroom window and headed downstairs. Distant noise reached them from the far side of no man's land. They waited hidden in the entrance of the house as a patrol of watchers sprinted by heading in the direction of the sound. It seemed the orphans were still causing trouble. When the coast was clear, Merrill led them quickly through the streets back to his toy shop, beckoning them all inside. Boy ran towards the jars of imaginations, which were hidden under Merrill's stairs, and with Violet's help found the four he was looking for. I, <coughs> I have to go to the orphanage and tell Jack to send a group to the archer's storeroom for the rest of the imaginations, he said as he headed towards the door, his pillowcase bulging with glass jars and, and stuffing. I'll go with you. No, Violet. Boy shook his head. You need to stay here in case anyone has questions about what we've done. You help Merrill. OK, if you're sure, Violet nodded, though she didn't want to. I'll be fine, I promise he said again before opening the door and disappearing into no man's land. Right, Merrill piped up, heading to the door in the wake of the boy's footsteps. I'm going to make some house calls, see if I can't round up a few people who'll listen to you, Billy. Billy nodded, but didn't reply. He was sitting quietly with his son on his knee, as if afraid to let him go. He hadn't spoken much since he'd gotten his imagination back, and, as Merrill left, Violet searched for things to say. Are you okay? Do you need water or anything? she asked to break the silence. How could I have let this happen? Billy whispered, more to himself than to her. Violet didn't know what to say and they slipped into an uneasy quiet. I don't blame her, my mum that is, Violet said a while later. It's not her fault. The archers did this. It's their my blame. Thanks, Billy smiled just as the door swung open and Merrill walked in followed by a group of about ten people. There's not many here, Violet whispered as Merrill joined her at the top of the room. Word travels fast, he replied. If they believe Billy, it'll be around no man's land in a shot. Merrill put his hands up to call for attention. This is Billy Bobbins, he began addressing the group, and his son, Billy Jr. Until a few hours ago, one had lived as an orphan in no man's land, while the other, imperfect, had forgotten that his son even existed. Billy bowed his head in shame and Violet winced at Merrill's choice of words. Eventually, a red-faced Billy looked up at the small crowd of people. I'm sorry, he said. There were tears in his eyes. I'm sorry I didn't know. I'm sorry I deserted you all. Are you telling us you're a perfectionist? The red-bearded man from the previous meeting shouted up from the back. Yes, he is. That's exactly what he's saying, Sam, Merrill responded. I didn't ask you, Merrill, the man snapped. I'm asking this fella. How do we know he's not lying to us? Lying to us all. He's not lying, a woman said, stepping out from the crowd. Billy stood with his mouth open as the dark-haired lady rushed forward, wrapping him in an, um, in an embrace. Lucy, I didn't... I had no idea you were here, he sobbed. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, Lucy. It's okay, Billy, she cried. It's okay. I never believed this day would come. I'm just so happy you're here. Lucy, 
Sam spoke again and all eyes turned towards him. Who is this man? What's going on? I wasn't sure I believed Merrill when he called to the door, but I had to see him with my own eyes, she said, tears streaming down her face. Billy is my brother. Everyone fell silent and the pair embraced again. Then, as Billy spoke to the room once more, Lucy held firm to his hand. I want to explain, but everything is so vague, I'm not sure I can. It's not that I meant to forget my son or my sister, he said, squeezing her hand. It's like I didn't know I had them, but now I've found them again, it's as if they were never gone. I've been in a bubble, but I can only see that now that it's burst. This all sounds so strange, but I hope you can try to understand what has happened to your families. It's not that they don't care. It's not that they've forgotten you. It's far worse than that. The archers, those twins, he spat, his face red to bursting. They have a lot to answer for. This will never do, they will never do this again. I didn't even know your son was here, Lucy sobbed. He can't have been born when you were taken, Lucy, Billy said, hugging her once more. We've got so much catching up to do. So it's real, Sam said, looking shocked and confused. William's plans are working. All that stuff he talked about, the tea and his imagination machine, it's all true. He looked round the crowd, a smile forming on his face. We could get our families back. Yes, Sam, and more. We could get our town back too, Merrill said excitedly, standing up on his workbench. Who's with us? I'm in, Sam shouted. So am I, another man stepped forward. Now what can we do? As Merrill relayed the plan, telling the no man's landers to convince everyone they knew, Violet slipped cautiously out of the toy shop and back into Perfect. She was still on, the, on a high from the atmosphere in the room as she climbed down the wall and banged on Iris's door. Boy was already in the kitchen with four more orphans who were newly reunited with their parents. Everyone was hugging and tears flowed. It's working, she whispered, reaching Boy's side. I know, isn't it great? he said, smiling at the scene in front of him. Not that, I mean Billy and his story. They believe him. We're building an army. Really? You serious? Boy smiled, wrapping his friend in a hug so tight that Violet could barely breathe. What is it, Violet? William asked, only just noticing her arrival. Billy Bobbins, his story is working, she said loud enough for the whole room to hear. We're building an army in no man's land. Everyone cheered and for the first time in ages, Violet felt as if things were actually starting to happen. Their plans were coming together at last. How many do we have? William asked. Not many so far, but Merrill says the, the news will spread. If we send more of the changed perfectionists over, it'll convince people faster. Will you take this group to No Man's Land, boy, and bring some more imaginations back here? We're on a roll, so let's keep going. How many imaginations? Boy asked. The machine can take up to eight at a time. Can you round up eight more orphans and give the list of names to Madeline so she can get their parents here while you're gone? OK, Boy nodded, sitting down to write eight more names on a piece of paper. Eight. Are you sure that that number of people won't be noticed coming and going from here? Madeline said, her face looking doubtful. It'll be fine, Madeline, William replied. You're doing a brilliant job. No one will suspect you. Only if you're sure, she said, taking the scrap of paper from Boy's hand. William nodded and Boy left the house with the four newly changed perfectionists and headed for no man's land. Madeline left a little later and Violet was just dozing off, 
her head on the kitchen table when she noticed the blonde-haired woman racing back by the window. I was nearly caught, Madeline cried, bursting in through the front door. I'm so sorry, I forgot the rules and I nodded at the watchers. You did what? William said, standing up from his seat. I'm sorry, William. I was so nervous about bringing that many people back that I completely forgot I wasn't meant to see the watchers. Slow down, Madeline. What exactly happened? William asked, pulling out a chair for her. Well, I was walking past a group of watchers patrolling on Edward Street. And, William said, trying to speed up her story, and, um, well, I was just minding my own business when out of the corner of my glasses I saw one of them look up at me. I caught his eye and I nodded. I don't know why I did it. I'm so sorry. You're not supposed to be able to see them. Did he say anything? Violet asked, sitting upright. I know that, Violet, Madeline snapped. I think I covered it up, though. I just kept going and pretended nothing had happened. Did they follow you? Iris asked. Well, I'm not. Madeline was interrupted by a loud hammering on the front door. Every soul in the room stopped breathing. Iris Archer immediately shot up from the table, beckoning everyone to hide. Violet, William, Madeline and Anna pushed the reimaginator into the back room and watched through a crack in the door as Iris went to answer the knocking. You see, Iris, my dear, she nodded at me, she did, then pretended she hadn't seen me. How stupid does she think I am? A watcher snarled, barging past Iris into the house. I don't know what you mean. What are you talking about? Iris asked, stepping away from the door as more watchers filed inside. It's just me here, on my own, always, like always, just the walls to talk to. You want tea? I like visitors. I haven't had anyone to talk to in as long as I can remember. Come on now, don't play the fool, Iris Archer, we followed her here. The watcher growled, grabbing her neck and forcing her frail body up against the whitewashed wall. We all know you're not as stupid as you look. I'm not neither's. I'm not stupid, Iris smiled. Well, that's a nice surprise. William, his face red with anger, signalled for the others to leave. He lifted the reimaginator through the back door and outside into the garden. Lads, search the house, the watcher said. Bangs and clatters rang from the rooms as the group huddled under the window outside, hoping the watchers wouldn't venture into the garden. What are you up to, Iris Archer? The watcher growled, rejoin rejoining her in the kitchen. I expect what you, you found what you're looking for, she asked, her tone mocking. Violet couldn't understand how she stayed so calm. Don't you be cheeky with me. Doesn't mean there's nothing to be found, old woman. We'll get it out of you. You're coming with us, he snarled. A chair scraped across the kitchen floor and William looked as if he was about to burst in through the back door. Madeline grabbed his arm, holding him still. Don't hurt her, lads. This one's precious to the archers. We'll see what George and Edward have to say. The watcher's voice faded into the distance as the front door banged shut. What'll happen to Iris? Violet panicked. William shook his head. My brothers won't hurt her. I know that much, but we need to get back to no man's land. Fast. And that's the end of chapter 32.